Dragon Ball Daima holds immense promise as it marks the 40th anniversary of the Dragon Ball franchise. And I'm confident that Toriyama has left us a special gift to enjoy. In the months leading up to its release, fans have been buzzing with anticipation and excitement, eager to see what surprises await them in the new series. However, amidst this anticipation, there are lingering questions within the fandom. One of the main concerns revolves around Goku returning to his childhood form. This has sparked a divide among fans, with some newer fans expressing disappointment at the departure from the adult Goku they've become accustomed to in Dragon Ball Super and Z. On the other hand, old fans who have fond memories of the original Dragon Ball series feel differently, seeing Goku's return to his childhood form as a nostalgic callback to the roots of the franchise. Yet, regardless of where fans stand on the issue, there's a collective apprehension about Dragon Ball Daima potentially mirroring the controversial aspects of Dragon Ball GT. Many fear a reputation of past mistakes, particularly with regards to the narrative direction and character development. There were many things about GT that made it great, but its beginning started off pretty slow and everyone generally hates it. However, amidst these concerns, there's one aspect of Dragon Ball GT that universally resonates with fans, and that's Super Saiyan 4. This transformation with this unique design, captivating backstory, and deep ties to Saiyan lore remains a highlight of the series. Its re-emergence in Dragon Ball Daima could potentially serve as a unifying force among fans, bridging the gap between different generations of Dragon Ball enthusiasts. To understand why Super Saiyan 4 can make a triumphant return in Dragon Ball Daima, it's essential to delve into its origin and significance within the Dragon Ball universe. This transformation represents a departure from the traditional Super Saiyan forms, tapping into the primal essence of the Saiyan race and unlocking a level of power that transcends conventional Saiyan transformations. Throughout the Dragon Ball series, the concept of Super Saiyan 4 has been subtly foreshadowed, particularly in the anime. While the manga may have not delved as deeply into this aspect, it's crucial to remember that GT serves as a continuation of the anime, whereas these hints and connections are prevalent. One of the key elements of Super Saiyan 4's foreshadowing lies in the portrayal of Saiyan power through the Ozaru form. In the anime, the Golden Great Ape, a variation of Ozaru, is showcased years before GT. Characters like Goku and Gohan exhibit hints of their Saiyan heritage through Ozaru noises and brief appearances of the form, suggesting an underlying connection to their latent power. Even in the original Dragon Ball manga, Goku's Saiyan abilities are hinted at through his encounters with the Ozaru form. His inner Saiyan power aids him in overcoming challenges such as the Ultra Divine Warder and defeating Demon King Piccolo, showcasing the deeply seated connection between Saiyan heritage and power. The transformation into the Golden Great Ape is shrouded in mystery, with no definitive explanation provided. However, a prevailing theory suggests that reaching a certain level of strength is a prerequisite for attaining the form. Vegeta's recounting of the Saiyan legend aligns with the notion of Super Saiyan resembling a Golden Ozaru, implying a connection between the two forms. Considering the circumstances surrounding the Golden Ape transformation, such as Goku's dying wish to protect the Earth and his utilization of the planet as a substitute for the moon, it's evident that the profound emotional and environmental factors play a role in triggering this transformation. Furthermore, the abundance of blood to waves essential for inducing Ozaru transformations may have also influenced the attainment of this golden form. Characters like Baby and Vegeta achieve this form through exposure to heightened blood waves, suggesting a correlation between the intensity of these waves and the transformation's potency. Converting this into Super Saiyan 4 prevents a fascinating contrast to his predecessors, particularly in terms of the emotional catalyst required for this attainment. Unlike the anger or hatred typically associated with achieving Super Saiyan form, Super Saiyan 4 seems to be triggered by feelings of love and a deep desire to protect. For Goku, this love manifests an unwavering dedication to Earth and its inhabitants. Throughout the series, Goku's strongest motivation stems from his desire to safeguard his home and the people he cares about. This sentiment becomes even more pronounced when he transforms into the Golden Ozaru, tapping into his Saiyan heritage in a display of primal power fueled by his love for the Earth. Similarly, Vegeta's path to Super Saiyan 4 is paved with his profound affection for his loved ones, particularly Bulma and Goku. Despite his initial antagonistic relationship with Goku, Vegeta's admiration and respect for his rival grew over time, culminating in moments of genuine camaraderie and mutual understanding. In his final moments before self-destructing against Majin Buu, Vegeta's thoughts linger on Goku, showcasing the depth of his bond and his longtime rival. In the context of Dragon Ball Daima, Goku's childhood and potential regeneration of his tail could serve as a catalyst for exploring the themes of Saiyan puberty and transformation. Much like in GT, where Goku's tail regrew over time, this process could signify a return to Goku's Saiyan roots and reawakening of his latent power. However, the absence of Earth as a conduit for transformation presents a unique challenge. While Goku's transformation into Super Saiyan 4 and GT relied on the presence of Earth, the role of Blood to Ways remains consistent. Introducing Super Saiyan 4 into Dragon Ball Daima undoubtedly presents an intriguing narrative prospect, but it also raises some significant challenges and questions for the series. While it could offer a fresh twist and an exciting evolution for Goku's character, its integration will require careful consideration and potentially signifying revisions to the established lore. One potential solution to incorporating Super Saiyan 4 into Daima could involve setting the main conflict on a different planet within the galaxy, providing an alternative location for the transformation to occur. This would bypass the need for Earth's involvement, while still allowing Goku to tap into the power of the Golden Ozaru and ascend to Super Saiyan 4. Alternatively, the series could opt to reimagine the process of achieving Super Saiyan 4, although this approach risks altering or contradicting the established mythology of the transformation, which might not sit well with fans. 
Another consideration is the timing of Daima within the Dragon Ball timeline. While some speculate that it takes place during the Buu Saga, others like myself speculate that it would be after Dragon Ball Super. Placing it in this timeline offers more flexibility for introducing Super Saiyan 4 without disrupting the progression of Goku and Vegeta's character arcs in Super. However, integrating Super Saiyan 4 alongside their existing god forms raises thematic concerns. Dragon Ball Super emphasized the divine and spiritual aspect of Saiyan evolution, culminating in forms like Super Saiyan God and Ultra Instinct, which are rooted in techniques of the gods. Reverting to the primal power of Super Saiyan 4 could potentially undermine this narrative direction and feel like a step backwards for the characters. One possible narrative workaround which could involve introducing external factors such as a demonic force or restrictions on God Key that compel Goku and Vegeta to tap into their primal Saiyan instincts and unlock Super Saiyan 4 could fit. However, even with such an event, it would be challenging to justify the continued use of Super Saiyan 4 alongside their more advanced forms going forward. Furthermore, if Daima is set before the events of Super, the absence of Super Saiyan 4 and subsequent arcs could create continuity issues and raise questions about why Goku and Vegeta never utilized this form prior. Let's delve deeper into the timeline and the settings of Dragon Ball Daima, especially when considering its relation to the other Dragon Ball series. Determining when Dragon Ball Daima takes place is crucial for understanding how it fits into the border Dragon Ball narrative. Dabura was indeed the king of the demon realm before falling under Bobby's control during the Buu Saga. In Daima, the depiction of a demon realm without its king is intriguing. Its empty throne room and figures floating above it while viewing footage from the Buu Saga suggest a connection to Dabura. Their white capes reminiscent of Dabura's attire reinforce this link. It's very plausible that characters in the demon realm are examining the past to strategize for future events. This behavior aligns with typical villainous schemes in the Dragon Ball universe, or just period, where past events often inform future plans. Therefore, the scenes focusing on the Buu Saga might be more about the character's interest in the period rather than indicating that Daima takes place during or immediately after the Buu Saga. Another crucial point is the separation of Supreme Kai and Kabuto, which only occurs in Dragon Ball Super, after they use the Namekian Dragon Balls. This strongly suggests that Daima happens post-Dragon Ball Super, as their fused form Kabuto Kai remained intact from the Buu Saga until their separation in Super. Some argue that the Wish and Daima could have caused their separation, but this seems less likely given the specifics of the Wish making and the consistent use of Purunga, the Namekian Dragon, for such significant change. In the trailer, Shenron is seen granting a wish, yet it's mentioned that the character saw aid from the Namekian Dragon Balls. This implies that while Shenron can grant many wishes, the most substantial and crucial ones, especially those affecting divine beings like Kai's, often require Purunga's power. The Kai's earrings in Daima are also green, a detail not seen in previous iterations where they worn yellow orangish earrings. This change in earring color could signify a new development or transformation in the future timeline, supporting the idea that Daima is set after Dragon Ball Super. Green earrings might indicate a new status, which hasn't been explored in the series so far. This new visual cue suggests progression in a setting beyond what was previously shown. Taking all these elements into account, it seems most plausible that Dragon Ball Daima takes place after Dragon Ball Super. The separation of Supreme Kai and Kabito, the investigation of past events by the Demon Run characters, and the nuanced use of Shenron and Purunga and the Kai's new earrings all point towards a timeline that moves forward from where Super left off. This future setting allows for a new plot development, character transformations, and story arcs that built on the rich history of Dragon Ball. Oh, you're still there. Well... Hello there. If you're still watching at this point in the video, it's for two possible reasons. Either A, you're a diehard Majin Bird fan, or B, you're the type of person who likes to see things through to the end. Either way, you're my type of viewer, those I feel I can truly connect with. That said, let me tell you how things go down over here on Majin Bird. I love Dragon Ball, so you see me making all kind of Dragon Ball content on this channel. This can range from what if theories, explanations, and my personal takes. These different topics are sorted by thumbnail or title. If the video says what if, then that's what it is. Look for a thumbnail that looks like fan art. What is will mainly be uploaded to the Patreon. There you'll find all kinds of what if theories very soon. I usually post episode 1 on the channel, but the continuation will be on Patreon. If the video title asks a question, it's usually a take of mine. Me giving an opinion about a specific topic or idea. In videos with thumbnails like this, white border, or explanation videos, look there to learn something new or revisit older topics you enjoy hearing. Make sense so far? The last thing I want to tell you guys is about the official Discord, Dragon Ball HQ. Here, I'd like to build a wholesome community of Dragon Ball fans where we can discuss the miracle that is Dragon Ball. See you there!